I thought many of the books in Bhagavad Gita is the exam, huh? <laughs> but now it's the book, credit. They are jacking terminology and uh, credit. <coughs> Meaning you have time to pay. Okay? So a credit transaction is halal, permissible in Islam. But uh, did the shopkeeper raise his price? Because he had to wait for his money. Yeah. There is no evidence of that. And it's a little bit late to manufacture evidence now. Wouldn't work. No. If he had done that, if he had raised his price because he had to wait, W-A-I-T, wait, wait for his money, then money could increase over time. <coughs> Meaning, you don't have to plant. No, you just got to wait and the money will increase by itself. Aristotle, a few thousand years ago, blasted that. Aristotle, not a Muslim. He says, but money is not like a woman. A woman by herself could multiply. She is one today, she could be two tomorrow because she gave birth a baby. Money is not like that, says Aristotle. Money cannot increase by itself. And Aristotle was so correct. And so in Islam, Cash price and credit price must be the same. I don't need to continue the lecture. <coughs> enough. Finish? Enough. Cash price and credit price must be the same. If you are so foolhardy as to come at me with boxing gloves and say, yes, 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 money must have value. If I have to wait for my money, I suppose to be compensated for it. And so credit price can be higher than cash price. And give me fatwa from this one and fatwa from that one and fatwa from that one and fatwa from that one. I will show patience for as long as I can show patience. But when patience runs out, I will say to him, come, come. Leave all your muftis behind, you come. And let both of us pray to Allah. To punish. With the worst possible punishment. And with a punishment which will last until the end of time. Who swear by is wrong on this issue? Hmm? And you don't need to bring any fatwa with you. If you are brave enough, and if you are convinced that you are right, that credit price can be higher than cash price, then come, my man, and let us do it. I hope I never have to do that with anybody. I hope I never have to do that with anybody. No. If they want to have their opinion, let them have their opinion. One day they'll be in the place. And when they wake up and the place is so dark, you know what happened after that. No need for boxing gloves. No. If Imran Hussein is wrong, well, let him go his way. And you believe you are right, well, you go your way. If even if 999 want to follow that opinion, let them follow it. We are only one on this side. No need for any boxing gloves. No need for any debates on the subject. Just allow us the freedom to choose our own choice of another. Today we have a situation in which Islamic banks around the world, including unfortunately Islamic Bank here in Malaysia, are engaged in a transaction which is the heart of Islamic banking. I call all the rest the periphery, this is the heart. A transaction that they call Morabaha. 
and they describe Moravaha in this way. That both buyer and seller are aware of the profit market. Profit market, they call it markup. And both buyer and seller are in agreement on it. And once that is there, it's a halal transaction. I say yes. Of course it's a halal transaction. Provided it's a cash transaction. Imran Hussein, that's the door. Go. He's spoiling the fun now. <laughs> Provided it's a cash transaction and buyer and seller are both aware of the profit margin, both agree it's a halal transaction, nobody agrees, nobody disagrees. But when you want to sell on credit at a price higher than the cash price, for example, the house is on sale for a hundred thousand ringgits. He's a dreamer. Where can you buy a house for 100,000 ringgit? <laughs> uh -huh. Let's be more realistic. <laughs> House is on sale for a million ringgit. That's more reasonable. <laughs> the house is on sale for a million ringgit. And you don't have the million. So the Islamic bank says, no problem, we will buy the house for one million ringgit and then we will send it to you for three million ringgit. So you and I are both aware that the profit margin, what they call the markup, I thought marking was something you did on the blackboard, <laughs> is two million ringgit, okay? The, 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 the first little fly in the ointment is that the bank never buys the house. The bank never owns the house. And it is an invalid transaction to sell that which you do not hold. Okay? So they must correct this anomaly. You must first take full ownership of the property or the goods before you can sell it. It's so simple a matter, nobody should become boxing gloves with me. But the reason why they don't do that is because of the legal charges and taxes and so on. To save on that. Okay, so putting that aside. An invalid transaction because you're selling that which you do not own. The, the cash price of the house is one million. If I had the one million, I could buy it for cash for one million. So that's the cash price. That's the market price. Why should I pay three million for that which is on sale for one million? The answer, the only honest answer, is it because I am given time to pay. He has to wait for his money. So that's why I'm paying him three million. So time and money are married together. Money is increasing over time. It is river. But because it is disguised as a Murabaha transaction, I said this is backdoor river. <laughs> okay? But if you are not convinced by me, you don't have to accept my views. No. Just wait until the angel comes to take your soul. If you are not convinced, you don't have to accept my views. Because of these that I've just described, Al-Azhar University, and that bogus fatwa, the bank interest is not revived. Because of these that I've just described, a Murabaha transaction that is masquerading, it is actually back to the river. And when I get a chance to speak to you on the second half of the subject of riba, you'll see how that is just as dangerous as this one. What is that second part? If you meet a man coming to the market to sell his goods, a truckload of durian, and you buy his durians from him before he could enter in the market. And when he enters into the market, he finds that he could have gotten a better 